Welcome to the SOC 2 HIPAA and High Trust presentation. First, I must read the following disclaimer. The material appearing in this presentation is for informational purposes only and should not be construed as advice of any kind, including without limitation, legal accounting or investment advice. This information is not intended to create and receipt does not constitute a legal relationship, including but not limited to an account client relationship. Although this information may have been prepared by professionals, it should not be used as a substitute for professional services. If legal accounting investment or other professional services is required, the service of a professional should be sought. Assurance tax and consulting are offered through Moss Adams LLP. Investment advisory services are offered through Moss Adams Wealth Advisories Advisors LLC. Now that we have this behind us, today's presentation is focused on and relevant to number one, the healthcare industry, and number two, service providers that provide services to the healthcare industry. The compliance framework and reports that we're going to specifically discuss are SOC 2, HIPAA, high trust, and a combination of both. SOC 2 is a report on service organization controls relevant to, to five criteria. There are security, availability, processing integrity, confidentiality, and privacy. Three, these reports can play a very important role in oversight of the organization, vendor management programs, internal corporate governance and risk management processes, and regulatory oversight. SOC 2 reports are restricted to specific users, very similar to a SOC 1 report. Just as Sarbanes-Oxley mandates the integrity of financial data, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, also known as HIPAA, mandates the security and privacy of personal, personal medical information. With this data increasingly being stored in electronic format, it's important of an assessment uh, be performed by a consultative and objective IT resource, and it, it's more important than ever now. So HIPAA compliance isn't just for healthcare uh, companies uh, anymore. Its recent expand, uh, expansions have extended compliance requirements to include business associates and entities that handle electronic protected health information, also known as EPHI. If your organization has any interaction with the healthcare industry, it's critical that you ensure adequate protections are in place to reduce the risk of unintended exposure to EPHI. Our approved auditors perform HIPAA assessments and issue high trust common security frameworks, also known as CSF, certifications to help ensure our clients comply with these standards. HIPAA is the security rule developed for protecting electronic protected health information, also known as EPHI. Uh, there are basically three types of safeguards, administrative, technical, and physical. HIPAA addresses risk associated with confidentiality, integrity, and availability of EPHI data. It provides limited guidance on determining risk, and it's not a certifiable framework, but a regulation. Ravine, now I'm gonna pass it over to you. Thank you, Mark. And so, Mark briefly touched upon high trust CSF, which is a common security framework. I'm gonna, gonna talk a little bit about the background of, of high trust, how it came about, and, and, and what it really is, and kind of walk through what how it compares to HIPAA and, and how you can layer your SOC efforts with with your high trust efforts to get uh, more bang for your buck. So a little bit about high trust. <clears throat> the CSF is built off of multiple security and compliance frameworks. But really, the roots uh, lay in ISO 27001, 27002 series, as well as the NIST 800 series. Uh, the CSF provides a comprehensive, prescriptive, and scalable framework for implementing security and privacy controls 
and provides a means to demonstrate compliance with the most sought after regulatory industry frameworks, um, HIPAA being one of them, um, also GDPR. HITRUST provides enterprises a certifiable framework that scales with the organization and its compliance needs and really based on its risk profile. Um, this is a key differentiator versus the one size fits all approach that some of their frameworks take. Um, so that's one of the key, key factors that sets HITRUST apart. Uh, in terms of its applicability, um, HITRUST started off with a focus on HIPAA, but latest trends have demonstrated that ransomware, phishing, business email compromise, or BEC are all on the rise. The relentless attacks on web apps and, and cloud computing resources have also increased over the last few years, including an increase in 2021 um, and more so than, than 2020. <clears throat> All of this to say is, is that cybersecurity continues to be a major risk for enterprises and one that boards of directors and audit committees are very focused on. With that in mind, high trust that really had its roots in the healthcare industry has, has evolved over time and allows enterprises to tailor the security and privacy controls based on industry specific um, or other applicable regulatory requirements and also risk profiles. So you can scope in and scope out various frameworks within high trust itself based on what's applicable to your industry or whatever um, specific risks you're trying to address. Furthermore, high trust is the only way to demonstrate in a certifiable manner compliance with the NIST CSF, the NIST CSF being um, the de facto standard as far as cybersecurity frameworks go. So again, an important aspect of this is, is you get your high trust report, you also get a NIST CSF compliance report and, and high trust is the only framework that can actually deliver both. So with that said, let's try and compare high trust and HIPAA. While there's no denying that high trust CSF uh, is broadly applicable now because of some of the changes that the um, high trust organization has made, the genesis of the framework is firmly in the healthcare industry and a focus um, is, is on HIPAA and demonstrating compliance with that. Um, so, for starters, HIPAA is not a certifiable framework. It is uh, a regulatory requirement that does not ha uh, have prescriptive controls, does not have um, complete risk coverage or a risk-based approach. It's partly based on, on, on all of those aspects, but does not provide a comprehensive, prescriptive, detailed, and risk-based approach that's certifiable that HITRUST does. So that's a good contrast between HIPAA and HITRUST. Now, when you're talking about HITRUST and soft reporting, you, you could have a situation where you've got a BAA or you've got other clients that, that require you to have a soft report and you have a BAA that requires you to demonstrate HIPAA compliance. You could layer these two things together and have a soft report with a focus on the ASCPA's prescriptive security and privacy controls and common criteria. And then you're looking at layering high trust on top of that to leverage some of those um, common criteria uh, the ASCPA has outlined and then build upon that to demonstrate not only HIPAA, but then maybe also other regulatory compliance needs that the organization might have. So overall, it's a good combination to essentially layer um, high trust based on your risk profile upon existing common criteria that the ASCPA already prescribes for soft reporting. And that's kind of the combination between the two that leads to a lot of synergies. So with that said, we're here to help. Uh, both Mark, who is a partner uh, within our RAC practice, and myself are here to answer any specific questions you might have with regards to how you can layer the two, what the most effective strategies are, how you get started on high trust reports or even soft reports for that matter, and, and what, what's the right approach and, and the right size and the right solution for your organization. We're happy to have those conversations and others, so feel free to reach out our contact information on your screen.